Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Billy, and if you are wondering whether you should consider learning C Sharp in 2019, I'm here to give you my top five reasons. But before we begin, I just want to give you a brief history on C Sharp. The language was first released in the early 2000s from Microsoft as a rise in popularity of Java. So, like Java, C Sharp is a strongly typed object oriented language. Since its release, it's maintained its popularity as one of the top languages in the industry. Reason number one why you want to learn C Sharp is that you can now build any kind of major application with the language depending on the type of framework you choose. What I mean by that is that if you choose the .NET framework, you can build a battle-tested enterprise application that's used across many different industries. If you choose Xamarin, you can build an Android or iOS app, and also you can build a Windows, Linux, and Mac desktop application as well. If you want to get into game design, you can use Unity. And now new to the team, um, if you want to make a full stack web application, you can use Blazor, which will let you write your web app with C Sharp and compile that to WebAssembly. And if you are interested in, in machine learning, and if you love AI, you can now use ML.NET, which is machine learning.NET, to build your application. And I just want to say that just because you know C Sharp the language doesn't mean that you're going to be able to go through all of these different type of applications right away. You're going to have to learn the type of industry that you're going to need. You're going to like, for example, if you want to learn game design, you have to actually learn game design. If you want to build enterprise application, you have to become a subject matter expert in it. If you want to build Android iOS apps, you've got to learn how Android and iOS lifecycle works. And if you're going to learn machine learning, obviously you got to learn about data science. But with that being said, it is great to have a common language that you can use between all of these different platforms so that you can just get started in actually building the application that you want to build as opposed to learning the syntax of the language. Finally, if you don't know yet, gone are the days of the old Microsoft and this is the new era of the new Microsoft where they actually open source most of the new stuff they're doing and don't have a closed off ecosystem from their developer. So you can find Xamarin, Blazor, ML.NET all available on GitHub. And the one that's missing from here, you'll notice that I say the little spot at the bottom is for .NET Core because I believe .NET Core deserves its own point. So when I talk about .NET Core going forward, I'm going to be assuming that the language of choice will be C Sharp because it is the most popular language to use with .NET Core. And there's other languages like VB or F Sharp that you can also use. A few interesting things about .NET Core is that it is now cross-platform, which means that you are no longer constrained to deploying your application on a Windows server. You can now deploy it on a Linux server, which means that it is a lot more starter friendly. So earlier I talked about how .NET Framework was more for a battle-tested enterprise. .NET Core is also for enterprise, but now it is also more startup friendly because you don't have to pay for heavy licenses anymore. And along with that comes with almost a paradigm shift when we're thinking about using a Linux system. Because in the Windows world, we're very used to using Visual Studio or using some kind of GUI to deploy. But now in the Linux world, they're used to using their CLIs, the command line interface. So that means that .NET Core has to come with a CLI as well, which obviously it does. And that means that when you're now learning C Sharp with .NET Core, you are more aligned with the rest of the industry. So if you're going to switch to a different language like Python, for example, you're wondering why you have to use a CLI to do like pip, blah, 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 right? Or if you're using Node, you're wondering why you have to go NPM install and NPM run and all this stuff. But it's actually a normal practice in the industry now. And since it's very CLI friendly, Docker support comes really easy with .NET Core. And with Visual Studio, you can actually just check off the little Docker support and it will actually produce your Docker Compose files for you. If you aren't excited yet, let me just show you a quick graph here about the speed of .NET Core, which is now currently number three. Back when it was, um, let me show you the more popular one. Back when it was in release candidate and 1.0, it was neck and neck with... Um, I believe under right under Netty, but now look at this is now currently in the third place and it's just getting better and better guys. So with the release of .NET Core 3.0, it comes with your desktop support again. So if you are a WPF developer and you want to join on the .NET Core bus, you can now come on once this is released. And I believe somewhere in um, Q2 to Q3. And when it is released, there's going to be a ton of new features. Along with that, a ton of new people trying to learn C Sharp and .NET Core. And with that in mind, 
Point number three is the community and the updates. When you're considering what language to learn, it is very important that you have a great community and that the language is always being updated as well. And with C Sharp, it is the third largest community on Stack Overflow. So that is very important because you'll definitely need to Google your way through lots of problems. With that being said, there are lots of places that you can find support for Microsoft stuff, one of them being their YouTube channels. So they actually have quite a lot of custom YouTube channels for their various different products. I will just show you a few right now. So this one right here is the .NET Foundation where they have their weekly standups for their .NET Core, for their .NET Cloud, ASP.NET. They even have their triaging for their GitHub, Xamarin community standup. So this is a great place to keep up to date with whatever framework you are um, using at the time. And another one is they have a channel dedicated for Xamarin developers. They have one for all purpose uh, Microsoft developers. And here's one for Azure Functions if you want to kind of work with serverless technology. And personally, I don't really go to a lot of meetups. I do go to more conferences because that's more of a formal educational place. And just like uh, with Stack Overflow, the meetup community for C Sharp is actually one of the largest for C Sharp as well. So just keep in mind that if you are interested in going to different meetups in your city that you live in, then that's also a possibility to kind of learn more of the language and also get in tune with um, people who are currently using the language in your local community. And as important as it is to have a strong community, it is important that the language is constantly updated with the latest techniques and trends. And let me just show you right here that the latest update to C Sharp was C Sharp 7.3, which is done in May 2018. And the next update will be with version 8.0, which will come with ASP.NET Core 3.0. So it will be sometime in this year when version 8 comes out. Moving on to number four, Azure. And I actually should have prefaced this earlier by saying that I didn't really put this in any particular order, but Azure is one of my favorite reasons why you should learn C Sharp. And that is because it is currently the second um, largest cloud provider, obviously after AWS, but it is growing faster than any of the other ones. It's growing faster than AWS, it's growing faster than IBM, it's growing faster than Google. Along with the speed of growth comes with a suite of services. One of my favorites being Azure Functions. You can also have a storage account, which lets you take all your file systems and puts it up to the cloud in a blob and have that distributed on a CDN. You can have a cloud provided service bus so that you can get off RabbitMQ in the local in case your server dies. You can have an actor system like Service Fabric that can scale out like crazy. You can have a elastic search replacement called Azure Search, which will kind of take away a lot of the indexing and a lot of the work for you basically. You can do machine learning with cognitive services and you can have a available anywhere database with Cosmos DB. And just watch out for Cosmos DB's pricing because it is a fixed cost. And the best part of all of these different services is that they come with great C Sharp support. Usually they start with the C Sharp support first and then they kind of build out to their other languages like VB.NET. For example, Azure Functions has great C Sharp support, and now it's slowly building out different languages like Node.js, Python, Java, and expanding onwards from there. And finally, reason number five you should learn C Sharp is the tooling and documentation. Obviously, when you're learning a language, you want to make sure that you have the right tools. You want to make sure that your IDE is the best IDE you can use. You want to make sure that when you run into trouble, when you are trying to find a tutorial, you can actually have some documentation to explain what to do. With that being said, the Visual Studio suite is actually quite good. Let me just show you right here. You'll have Visual Studio ID. You can have the community edition for free. And if you haven't used Visual Studio Code already, you should definitely download it and use it. It is one of my favorite IDEs for any kind of JavaScript, Python, any like I even sometimes do SQL on it now just because it's so good. And then you have Azure DevOps, which is obviously formerly VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services. And then this new thing called Azure App Server app center which i have no idea what it is but i will definitely dig into it so if you guys don't know the documentation for microsoft docs.microsoft.com is actually open source as well so if you find any mistakes if you find any errors you can actually make a pull request to fix them because it's all on github so let me actually show you docs.microsoft.com and this is the top level view usually you get to somewhere inside of inside of these docs 
through Google and you, you know, end up in one of their tutorials, but you can just see how much stuff they have available here and you just keep drilling deeper and deeper and deeper into their documentation. And it is a great place to learn if you are the type of person who likes to read, who likes to kind of go through that process as opposed to kind of a more video format learner. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Before I end it, I just want to give you one quick tip on learning languages in general, and that is pick a language and commit to mastering it. Perseverance is key. Once you learn one language, it is a lot easier to learn another language and learning other languages isn't really about syntax anymore, but how technology works with the language. And don't get caught up in nonsensical arguments about language sucking because XYZ company uses this other language instead. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you have any other reason why people should learn C Sharp, put it in the comments below and subscribe to this channel for more videos. I'll see you guys next time.